You're watching Leadership Forum here on AM Live. And of course, this morning we have guests from Toastmasters uh, clubs around the country. And earlier on, if you started with us, we had introduced them. But of course, we shall give you full details of this, uh, gentlemen and ladies as well, to tell us more about Toastmasters. Of course, we've been doing this. Even if you've been watching AM Live and especially Leadership, Leadership Forum with any regularity, you might have noticed at least bi-monthly we hold this particular forum for you to get to understand what Toastmasters is all about and of course to enhance your public speaking as well. So we'll go back to this gentlemen and ladies to tell us more about Toastmasters. Of course we need to prime and or always remind our viewers what Toastmasters is all about. Uh, had introduced you before but let's hear from Jared briefly. Toastmasters again, uh, which club you're coming from, I had introduced you but for the benefit of our viewers. Good morning. Uh, good morning Vera. Uh, my name is Jared Ewuko. I'm a member of Kwanzaa Kenya Toastmaster, a movement that has been in Kenya for the last 35 years. Let's hear from uh, Kari. Should I be mentioning your names? Of course, I should just go sequentially so that now people can get to know your names. They don't need to mention your names. All right, let's begin with Kari, then we'll go to Agatha. Thank you. Good morning, viewers. My name is Kari Motu, and I am a member of Smart Speak Toastmasters Club and been in the movement for about a decade now. So you defected? I defected. <laughs> a while back. <laughs> what are you hoping? Supporting others. Supporting others. <laughs> yes, All supporting right. others. Good morning, I'm Agatha Juma. I'm a member of Sematus Masters Club. Good morning, my name is Donald Fosire. I'm a member of Sematus Masters, the most exciting club in the entire country, in fact, Africa, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's debatable. Good morning. My name is Angela Raria from Kwanzaa Kenya Toastmasters Club, the oldest Toastmasters Club in Kenya. Good morning. My name is Jafet Musao from Kwanzaa Kenya Toastmasters as well. The mother of all clubs. <laughs> all right. So we want to know your roles today uh, because uh, of people will love to know what really transpires in Toastmasters. We've mentioned this before, but we need to also remind them again. So what really happens in Toastmasters, and why Toastmasters? Jared. Yeah, a Toastmasters is a communication and leadership program, and, and, and leadership is defined as the ability to visualize, then mobilize people to follow that vision. And of course, we cannot have uh, uh, leadership without followership, which is management. Where communication comes in, and as we all have had before, communication is the transfer of information from one individual to the other so that you're on one page. So that's what we try to do. And, and when you join Toastmasters, there are lots of programs that you do, and you transition from the toddling speech of self introduction all the way to very renowned speeches that are at a very high level, including uh, keynote addresses. Mm -hmm. How long have you been in Toastmasters? Toastmasters yourself? I've been a member for the last 18 years. For the last 18 years? Yes. Right. Agatha? I've been a member for about nine years now. Summer Toastmasters, as Don said, the best club there is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What has been the high spots for you in Toastmasters? I think for me, my highlights in Toastmasters is really the ability to grow. What Toastmasters does that very few other organizations are able to do is to ensure this organic progressive growth. You sort of have the ability to see yourself grow, improve from day to day. And every time you get into that meeting room, there is this excitement that sort of builds up. And people tell you that you speak better, you communicate better, you're a better leader, and I attribute that to Toastmasters. That's, that's my highlight, really. Mm -hmm. Angela. Toastmasters is probably one of the wisest decisions I made 10 years ago, the, uh, the decision to join it. And for me, that journey has been about putting life, putting life to the, to the quote often used about leading from the front. As, as a club official of many years, Toastmasters really gives you the ability to lead by example. Mm -hmm. Lead by example. Jaffa? I think Toastmasters presents one of the safest environment within which to learn. Immediately you join and become a, ment a member, you're assigned a mentor. And what this person does is help you to figure out what Toastmasters is about, to figure out your projects. They literally handhold you. Secondly, when you have to present your projects, you have a, a friendly evaluator yes. that tells you 
your strengths, <coughs> what you need to work on. So to me, it has been a very friendly environment within which you can grow very fast. Thank you. Carrie Moto. I think for me it has been acquiring skills that are quite transferable, very transferable across so many industries. So while you're learning leadership and communication, mm -hmm. it's not purely for people who are going into the public speaking forum. Mm -hmm. You can find yourself in your workplace and in other areas thrown into a position where you have to stand up and speak in front of a group. And this has given me those sort of skills where on the spot I can stand up and say something. All right. Yes. And today we're going to be, of course, experientially having this particular session that you normally have uh, in the clubs as well. We know of the different roles that also you have within the programs or the clubs. Would you mind just telling us briefly, because all of you also will be participating here, playing one role or the other. Tell us about this particular roles that we do have. Let's begin with you, Kari. So I will play the role of the master evaluator, yes. which is essentially the person who reviews the whole meeting, how it flows, what happened, uh, recognize the good things that were done, and also make some recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, let's hear from uh, Don Musira. I'll be the table topics master. A lot of us, in many occasions, are called upon to speak, and to speak impromptu. You want to give a, you want to give a vote of thanks. You need to say a few words on behalf of a group. And the table topic session gives members an opportunity to organize their thoughts quickly and respond to a question or a scenario that's put to them. And I'll be doing that today. All right, thank you. Jared? I don't know what my role here today is, but I know that in Toastmasters, there's the different roles. You, you're supposed to be delivering an impromptu speech today, right? <laughs> yeah. That very sounds good. very impromptu. <laughs> 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 no, I, I think we had this discussion. <laughs> Unless you forgot. Yeah. So shall I get out now? <laughs> 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 All right, let's hear from Angela. The ability to deliver your message effectively is a hallmark of a good speaker. More importantly, the ability to do this within the allocated time mm -hmm. really reflects speaking excellence. As your timer this morning, my work is to ensure that you observe the allocated time given to you in the prepared speech segment and in the impromptu section. And then during the table topics, speakers will be allocated one minute and I will ring the bell when that time is up. Thank you. Agatha. Um, I'm here to cheer the group on. <laughs> really, I'm here to give a prepared speech. How much time do I have? Five minutes. Five minutes. The time I'm change. here to give a prepared speech in five minutes. All right, thank you. Jafet, I think the role that we have not really picked upon is uh, the hack master. I thought it was impromptu. <laughs> <laughs> it was impromptu, right? So Jafet, you're going to be playing the, the, the role of a hack master. And uh, we don't have a joke master because all of us will actually be giving a joke, but at least someone should be leading this particular session. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pick one of you to do this, right? And um, who doesn't have a role? You do have a role. You, you, oh, you that is your speech. You just told Imp me. Impromptu, impromptu, but I should give you the role. That right. joke master that will be your session. Joke. Again, Did that's another impromptu. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So I think we can fly with that. So and we will hear from Agatha. She's going to be delivering her speech this morning. Agatha, she's the head of the public-private dialogue, that is PPD unit at the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, KEPSA. Her work mainly involves coordinating engagements between KEPSA membership, which comprises business members' organization in different sectors of economy, with various arms and agencies of government in advocacy, for a conducive business environment. Also before joining KEPSA, she worked with the Kenya Tourism Federation, which is the umbrella body for the private sector and tourism charged with advocacy for conducive business environment for the sector as a CEO. Agatha also, she is a co-founder and director at Engage Kenya Limited. Engage provides a platform for ordinary and extraordinary people to inform, inspire, and influence through speech. Agatha, you have five minutes, beginning now. A friend of mine was buried on Saturday. Lillian died in a road accident two weeks ago. And Lillian was, was effervescent. Life fizzed out of every pore of her body. And Lillian loved the fine things in life. She she attracted the finer things in life. 
especially the kind that's covered in skin, in human skin, because Lillian was a lover of people. When you were around Lillian, you felt more human than, than you normally would, because she held a hand, she laughed with you. Whenever you needed something and you called Lillian, she would either provide it for you or give you a connection to someone who could. And her family and friends were saying if, if they needed to send something home to the village, Lillian would offer to do it just for an opportunity for her to travel home and meet with family and meet with friends. She, she ate life with a big spoon. During her funeral service, before they traveled to lay her to rest, a friend of hers stood and gave a tribute. And she said something that has stayed with me and words that have been scratching at my conscience all week. Amongst the many things she said, with a voice that was stronger than the circumstances dictated, she said, we're all here because we have, ate of the, we have eaten of the fruit that was from Lillian's tree. And she said, there is no tree that bears fruit for its own consumption. There is no tree, however big and strong, that will ever be able to consume its own fruit. And ladies and gentlemen, that gave a whole new meaning to a song we sang in Sunday school many years ago. Zaini matunda mema, is that familiar? And even though at that age we quite didn't understand the meaning of the song, but as we grew on in life, we were taught to bear fruit, to be productive. And we have, over the years, learned and worked hard to be productive. And we understood productivity to mean success, financial success, career success, moving up the corporate ladder. And through hard work and a lot of luck shining our way, many of us have become strong trees, tall, sturdy, strong trees that have a lot of fruit. But I put it to you that a lot of us are groaning under the weight of the fruit we have borne. Because while we have borne thick, juicy fruit, if you think of a mango tree, we have not allowed people to come close enough to us to eat of the fruit. We have been productive. But what, ha what happens to the fruit that you have borne? Because you cannot eat your own fruit. And, and the lesson for me from this was, Agatha, you can bear as much fruit as, as you think you can. But what do you do with it? Once you're gone, how useful is the fruit either to you or to anyone else? which poses us to reflect and ask ourselves, does it make sense? Does success make sense? Does wealth make sense if it is not shared? And fruit for me is human connection. Fruit for me is allowing other people into your space to tap into your skills and knowledge. Fruit is taking a boat ride at Uhuru Park with family, or taking a Dao cruise in Lamu. Fruit for me is standing at the top of KICC and marveling with friends and family at how the city looks, or doing it on a hot air balloon. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to urge you, as the week ends, ask yourself, does it make sense to spend all your life hunched behind a desk working hard for success that no one else can enjoy because you're so sour and so tired at the end of it, you cannot share this. Ask yourself, does it make sense to bear so much fruit and groan under the weight of it? You might as well not bear fruit. I mean, you're just a waste of space. I put it to you, Lillian's time on earth may be gone, but her time here will never be gone. Does it make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Right. A big clap for Agatha. Right. Part of also Toastmasters uh, is giving 
impromptu speeches. So we have, as we all say, no soothing idea what the topic will be. And I want to give this particular time to also the panelists to just pick a piece of paper and you can actually write, you know, a topic for Jared to give us an impromptu speech today. Just pluck a piece of paper from your notebook and then we'll, we'll do a toasting, right? So that we can actually hear from Jared. Various topics, it can be security, it can be, uh, you know, the war that we, uh, we're experiencing also in Syria. Here in the country, the politics, <laughs> <laughs> right? It can be a Donald Trump. So that's what they're doing. I think we shall... Let's just show them what they're doing actually right now. The pieces of papers right now coming with those particular... Yes. So Jared, he will walk over to the podium to give us an impromptu speech. As I also read out his profile as well. Jared is a coach for the Ken Blanchard Companies. He's a marketing graduate of Transworld Education College UK and is a certified public speaking professional with Toastmasters International. Also is a professional uh, public speaker I've mentioned, a mentor, evaluator and award winning member of Toastmasters International. He's going to give us the imp imp impromptu speech I'll pick the one that really tickles my fancy. <laughs> All right. The same for Amelia. Just show us what we're doing. All right, to be or not to be. This is your topic. Beginning now. To be or not to be. You live but once, and you either become who you are, or what happens around you gets to make you who you should be. But the big question, what is it that you'd like to be? What is it, if you sat down today and thought about 10 years down the road, what do you like to be? You could be a young boy at age eight, you could be a teenager just pulling out of college. You could be a Form 4 student just waiting to sit your exams. What is it that you'd like to be? And what is it that at a blink of an eye you would say, this is not what I'd like to be? So to be what you would like to be means that you need to work on yourself. And there are many, many things that we come with that is not packaged right, that we need to get out of the box and work around. And one of them could be you want to be fit. What are some of the things you need to do to get fit? You want to drop some weight. You want to get good at public speaking. You want to get good at making a meal. You want to be an all-rounder with the ability to deal with each and everything that life presents to you. You'll realize that in life, we'll always be presented with some bends that we are not sure of. But what is it that you're going to do to be yourself and give your best for everything that presents itself before you and bring out your best? Remember, life has no rehearsal. Everything that we do is real, so what is it that you can do when every opportunity presents itself. Opportunity only comes to those who are waiting for it. It's not like a fly that flies around your face and they flip your hands to throw it away without a reason. It still comes back. So what is it that life throws your way that you should take very seriously and work around to get better at what you do? Remember, life is God's gift to us and the way we live that life is our gift to God. He gives us every opportunity to get better at what we do. So back to that big question again. What is it that you'd like to be? What is it that you've yearned being? I'd like you to think 10 years down the road and imagine yourself 
with that that you've always yearned to have, and people are sitting around you, what are some of the things that they're going to say about you? What are you going to say about yourself? What is the feeling that you're going to have? That is exactly what it means to be who you want to be. But on the flip side, we also can be what we don't want to be because we choose not to be what we should be by not taking the opportunities that come in life, being called upon to impromptu occasions to introduce yourself, those are going to come your way. And if you don't go back and learn exactly how to deal with those moments, you'll be caught with your parents down. I know many people get caught with their parents down, and I'm sure the experience is not pleasant. You wouldn't want to get there. So back again, what is it that you want? Would you like to be that or not? To be or not to be? Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. <laughs> All right, to be or not to be, an impromptu speech delivered there by Jared Ouko. Of course, this was really off the cuff, right? And that is also the main gist about Toastmaster, that to, uh, he, we can train you or they can train you to be you know, a good speaker who can speak off the cuff without any preparation. Right, let's see if from uh, Dawn this morning, I give you this opportunity to lead us also on that particular session of Table, talk table Topics. Thank you very much, Tipo. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, the essence of the Table Topics session is to give people an opportunity to speak impromptu, to put their thoughts together quickly and speak to an audience. I'm going to paint, paint out a scenario and I will then pick someone to speak to that scenario. Here goes. You are a member of a political alliance and you have just been declared the presidential flag bearer. Address the other principals who lost out. Japheth. It was early in December, as near as I remember, as I sat beneath that tree. The vision came to me and I knew that my destiny is to lead this country. So today is a great time in which this dream has been fulfilled. And I'd like to acknowledge, appreciate, and thank my fellow core principals that have walked with me in this journey. And today to have them here supporting this nomination is a great thing. And I think we're gonna make a great team. We all have different DNA, when you put it in one pot, I want to guarantee the people of this country that we're gonna transform this country and make it great once again. Oh, give him a hand. Thank you. mm -hmm. You're a member of that same political alliance and you have just lost out on becoming the presidential flag bearer. Assure your wife that everything is okay. Jared. You know, one of the best moments that I've always known in my life is that if you want to speak and let something be hard by your wife, it's at night, 3 a.m. or early in the morning. And I know this is when everything else is set up in your mind. And I'd like to assure you that, you know, you, you chose me out of, you know, 9 million people or 9 trillion people to be your husband, and you know I'm a winner. So, what do you do to do the little <laughs> game like, you know, elections or nominations? I can nominate myself. You know I'm the head of this family, and even God knows that when I came into this world, I came fighting. I didn't just give up. So out of every, you know, not million sperms, I'm the only one who came out, so I'm a winner by sense of just being here. So. I'd like to assure you, you know, you have the best, and I will never disappoint you. It's always a tomorrow. Failure is just the next opportunity to start another journey, and it's even better. Which party do you belong to? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You or his wife respond, Carrie. Well, my darling, this has been quite a journey for the last 12 months. And I'm not sure I was 
prepared for this when you proposed many, many years ago. But certainly, you know, my role was to stand beside you, to support you, to be with you. And although I had already picked out the curtains for State House, um, those can be put on hold for a while until the next journey. And we'll be in this together. We, we, we haven't lost, we've just uh, postponed the steps that we're meant to take in this particular role, in this particular Germany. And it'll give us a while to, to pause, to gather ourselves, to rejuvenate, to look back and see what went right, what went wrong, and to come out stronger and better for the next round, for the next run. So, but well done. Okay. Good. What is the one thing that fascinates you about Kenyans? Angela Rue. Kenyans, Kenyans. Kenyans. There are no people quite like us, I believe, on this universe. For example, a tanker carrying explosive fuel overturned. Instead of scampering for safety, we run towards the very object that could decimate all of us. Kenyans. 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 Guilty of some of the craziest traffic offenses on this planet. And yet when the situation calls for it, we stand together in solidarity to support starving Kenyans, to donate blood when the situation demands it, to mourn with parents whose children have been decimated at a university by terrorists. Kenyans, Kenyans, Kenyans. We are great people talented people. There's no one quite like Kenyans on this universe, I am convinced. Let's applaud Kenyans and Angie. <laughs> and, and that ends our session. Fantastic. All right. Also, I want to pull a surprise as well. We are going to have another impromptu speech. I'm going to choose that particular topic and also choose the person that will walk to the podium. All right. So, Just give me a moment to write that particular speech, so this is a surprise for you. <laughs> All right. Thank you for electing me as a president. Jaffa, walk to the podium. Just remember to remove your mic and tell Kenyans all right, use as well as just walk. Thank you. So Jafeth is the president of Kwanzaa Kenya, and of course now he has been elected the president of Kenya as well. Talk to us. Thank you for electing me as your president. It is an onerous task, very well clear to me, but one to which I'm equal to the task. I want to thank the electoral body for running a credible, reputable, and believable <laughs> <laughs> supervision of the elections. And today, we can say that the people of this country have had their will genuinely expressed through the results that we have today. I want to acknowledge my worthy competitors for putting up a pretty good campaign and I want to extend an olive branch to them and tell them this country belongs to all of us and urge them to forget the fights that we had during the campaigns and to look forward to working together to build a nation that we all can be proud of. I will be reaching out with details to each one of the party leaders. And what I want to do is to build a bipartisan approach to the many issues that face this country. There is hunger. There is drought. There is education system that's not working. There is lack of water. Too many to mention, but I believe as a team working together, we can surmount all these problems and we can once again raise Kenya to where it belongs, a beacon of light in the region. 
Thank you, Mr. Tosbast. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, another surprise. If I was a woman, Don, <laughs> remember to remove your mic and walk to the podium. If I was a woman, so I'm going to run up his profile as he's, he's walking up to the podium. Don is a head of head strategic change at the Central Bank of Kenya. Also, he's a certified executive coach and co-runs Engage Kenya Limited, which is a platform that gives ordinary and extraordinary people an opportunity to inform, inspire, and influence through speech and music. He's a member of Sema Toastmaster. You have five minutes, brother. Thank you very much. The thing that fascinates me about women is not just their beauty, it's the way they think. If I was a woman, I would wonder why are they so suspicious of everything? If I was a woman, I would wonder, why does everything have to end up in a fight? If I was a woman, I would look at a man and say, why is it that each time I need something you don't deliver? If I was a woman, I would have this urge to question everything. I would have this urge to have everything. If I was a woman, I would wonder, why do men make things so hard? If I was a woman, I would wonder, why are job opportunities for women so few? If I was a woman, I would probably think that everything that happens in this world is because women are not given a chance. But I'm not a woman. And as long as I will keep wondering why women are the way they are, I will keep having this feeling that as a woman, nothing happens for me. As a woman, I don't have opportunities. As a woman, Nothing can happen for me. But then again, if I was a woman, I think I'd be more nurturing. I would be more loving. I would be more sensitive. I would think of other people before I think of myself. If I was a woman, I would be able to think before I act. If I was a woman, I would be the sort of person that sets everything right and sets everyone right. If I was a woman, I would be the type of man that ensures that other women are taken care of. But then again, I'm not a woman, and even these thoughts of being a woman are troubling in themselves. <laughs> but then again, if I was a woman, I would know that everything that happens in this world is not really because men are not stepping up. It's because as a woman, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am unique and weird even. If I was a woman, I would probably say my time is up and I'll sit down now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Don. All right, one last surprise. Of course, if Don was a woman, I give a right to reply to the women. I choose one of them, Angela Loria. She walks to the podium right now to tell us what she thinks about Don's if I was a woman speech. Do you agree with the sentiments that have been raised there? So I will read out Angela Loria's profile as she walks to the podium to just tell us a bit about what he thinks men are thinking about them. He's the founder and managing partner of Upskill Africa Limited, a soft skill solutions provider, also a customer experience specialist. She possesses exceptional communication skills and a passion for service excellence with a track record of successful business process re-engineering projects to facilitate organizational change. She is a certified coach with the Academy of Executive Coaches. Also, she's a member of TOS Masters. I'll time you now because you're the timer. You have five minutes beginning now. If you are a woman, and you are not, but if you are a woman, you would know what it means to be born soft of flesh naturally gentle, and yet expected to be the hand that rocks the cradle. If you are a woman, which you are not, you would know what it feels like to be brought up believing in equity and equality of opportunities, to work as hard as your brothers and your male counterparts in class, and then join a corporate world where you will have to prove yourself two times over and earn 30% less than your male counterparts. If you were a woman, which you were not, you would know the bliss 
that comes sometimes from the strength of stepping back, not out of submission, but out of the common good, out of seeing the bigger picture of what it means to work towards harmony and peace. If you were a woman, you would know how to celebrate the aesthetic nature that you are endowed with, the love for color, the love for detail, the ability to turn a flat into a home, the ability to mold a child into a responsible and loving being. If you were a woman, you would know the joy of having a word count that is not limited to 600 words a day, like your male <laughs> counterparts. The ability to use language to make people happy and speak and sing. If you were a woman, which you were not, you would know the joy that comes out of, the joy and the relief that comes out of crying when you need to. Tears of joy at the birth of a new child. Tears of joy at celebrating your husband, even when he loses out on the presidential nomination. <laughs> Tears coming out of a broken heart arising from a loss of a loved one. The loss of a parent, the loss of a child, the loss of a friend. If you are a woman, you would know the freedom that comes out of being connected with your emotions and the lack of embarrassment to express this spontaneously as and when the situation demands it. But then again, you are not. So my dear brother, I commend you for all your imaginings, wild as they may be, about what you would do as a woman. But unless and until you are created a woman, imaginings is all they will be. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. A big hand for Angie. All right, so we shall evaluate also this particular, all of us, you'll be evaluators on the impromptu speeches, uh, beside the fact that also we had also prepared speeches and one impromptu, and we have the evaluator as well. But for now, we want to also open the, uh, the, the forum for talk session. Just before talk session. Sorry? Just before talk session. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. you know, this is an opportune, an opportune moment for us to you know, to condole with Kanini and George. She was a Toastmaster at Kwanzaa Kenya Toastmaster. They were Kwanzaa Kenya Toastmaster members, and we want to take this opportunity to to send our condolence as a as a club or Toastmaster in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And and George, this is a message to you that you know life has uh, many bends, and uh, it presents uh, God ordained opportunities to to get up and stand during the moment. And we want to stand with you right now, and we pray that all will be well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I remember, uh, of course, also I'm a member of Toastmaster, and one time we had a table topic session, and Janet also was picked upon. And she became the best table topic, uh, you know, uh, master then, or mm -hmm. mistress, I should say, during that particular time. And she was a very eloquent speaker, gifted, and we celebrate our event today. All right, let's hear from you guys. I'll, who was actually to pick up on the joke session to lead us through that particular, was it you, Jafar? Just remind me. I'm doing a sloppy job as a Toastmaster today. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> I think it was Angela. Was it Angela? No. <laughs> of course, all of us will give jokes. <laughs> Yes. I knew, I knew it would be me. <laughs> See, he came prepared. <laughs> yeah, <almost true. laughs> you know, it's, the master of it from you. And we'd better <laughs> laugh, please. <laughs> 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 yeah, very, I mean, that's a joke in itself. <laughs> you know, this is a celebration session, and many people are having moments to celebrate. Uh, so this man wakes up and sends an SMS to you know hundreds of his friends, and he says, you know. I know it's a, a moment of celebration and I'm going to have some get together to roast some meat and get some drinks and I'd like you to think about this seriously and consider very seriously because I think it's a moment that we all need to celebrate. So as I buy all these things I, I wait to celebrate and I ask you people to do the same in your homes.
the punchline comes later. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. All right, next. <laughs> Any of you? All right, so I'll, I think I can remember one or two. So there's a young man who is having trouble falling asleep at night. I mean, it's been going on for weeks and it's affecting his life. He he's, goes to work, he's tired, it's affecting his marriage. So he goes to the doctor and explains what's happening. That I, basically, I can't sleep at night. And the doctor asks him a series of questions. Are you, are you worried? Are you stressed? Is something happening in your work life or the marriage? And to all of this, he replies, no, there's nothing unusual, it's the same. Nothing much has changed. And the questions continue from the doctor. And the young man thinks, well, the one thing I've noticed at night is that my neighbor has dogs which run out around the neighborhood at night and make a lot of noise. Um, that might be affecting. So when he, at the end of the session, the doctor says to him, well, here is a prescription for some tablets, sleeping pills. And it's one tablet every night before you sleep. So the young man goes off, gets his prescription, and then he comes back after a month to the doctor. And the doctor asks him, so what happened? Has it improved? And he says, the patient says, no, it hasn't improved. I, I still can't sleep. And the doctor asks him, well, did you take the tablets, you know, the instructions I gave you? And the man says, yes, I followed them, you know, one an hour before going to bed, but it's very hard chasing a dog at night to give him a tablet <laughs> to sleep. It's <laughs> <laughs> so. a rejoinder to that. You know, you know, during this betting moment, people bet so much that they're so engraved into it that it worries. So this man bets to the point that when he goes to sleep, he can't sleep. So he goes to the doctor the following day and he says, you know, what happens? Uh, you know, I, I just can't sleep. He said, oh, what is it that is happening? You know, I've been, I watch football and now the football is playing in my head at night. So I just can't sleep. So he tells him, okay, uh, don't worry. I'll deal with that. So he says, no, 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 before you deal with that, let me tell you why it really gets bad. Because now, at night, it plays in my head, and the footballers are monkeys. So, this is what really scares me. Then, then he goes, how long has this been going? He said, oh, it's been a series of matches. So I've been following very closely, and, and now it's turned into monkeys, and I'm just so scared. So he says, okay, don't worry. I'll give you some pill that you're going to deal with that. And he says, when are you going to give me right now? So tonight you'll not see. He said, no, no, don't worry. Don't give me that today because tonight is the final. <laughs> 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 All right, one last one. My cousin Jason is a, a very prayerful young lad. And he's worked really hard throughout his undergraduate program. And he has whined and moaned to me about his reality, which is the reality of many Kenyans, that finding a job is hard to do. And so he enlisted me in this, what we we're calling a prayer campaign for him to get a job. And after a month, I call Jason and I ask him, Jason, what's the progress? No job. Three months later, I call Jason. And he tells me, you won't believe it, Angie. I had a most phenomenal experience. There I was crying in church, kneeling. My knees were hurting from everything. And then a voice from behind the altar said, young man, get up and actually write an application letter and send your CV. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me give, also give it a stab. <laughs> So there was this man that was knocked by a car, right, from the Luya land. And so the paramedics that came around, you know, they were giving him first aid, attending to him, and they said, oh, oh, speaking in Swahili, let him, let him, let him, let him, Aziwa. Then they saw the man just raising his finger. Then he called up this paramedic, you know, close to his ear. They said, Namukate <laughs> Pia. <laughs> Can I give him a book? Yeah. <laughs> Seems J Jaffet has one as well. Yes. Although jokes are not my kind of thing. Okay. But there is 
a history behind it. You know, when I grew up, I set the family record of the perennial school failure. Nine siblings, 15 nephews and nieces, this record is yet to be challenged. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the way I used to get my report form at the end of the term, receipt to a corner, open it quickly, hoping for a miracle, failed again. Then I would send my brother, Jack, I hope you're watching, I'm about to make you famous. <laughs> <laughs> I would send Jack, tell him, Jack, I failed again, go prepare father. What you do, you do that very faithfully, then he would send back a task report in the hand of our sister. It would say, Father prepared, prepare yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we want also to invite uh, Sean Cartavillas to also give us, this is a, away from Toastmasters experience, there's a breaking news uh, this morning regarding one of the athletes in the country that has passed on. So we don't know the details, but Sean will be walking momentarily uh, to the studio to give us the details of this particular oi. All right, he'll come to give us all the details I'm being instructed by my director. But in the meantime, as we, we are waiting for Sean, we shall be hearing from the evaluators as well. But before we hear from Curry, all of us, we shall evaluate, you know, how Angie performed, also Japheth and uh, Don Wasiri performed, and Sean, if he walks into the studio then, he'll give us all that information today. Right, so let, let's, gear, let's get to see how they performed, especially with the impromptu speeches. Um, Curry, I know you, you're gonna be evaluating... Agatha. Agatha. Yes, yeah. evaluating Agatha. But looking at how Don performed, mm -hmm. could he have done better? Did he do well? I, well, he did very well, impromptu, and to be asked to put himself in the shoes of the opposite sex is on the at last minute, because uh, that is uh, quite an achievement. Well done, Don. And you did come up with, clearly you've been listening to women. You know, you've picked up on some ideas and you understand some aspects of women. So that shows uh, good listening skills and uh, that you, you do appreciate the challenges that women go through. I would have liked to hear a little bit more, yeah, maybe on the, the aspect of where life is difficult for women. Um, life is a lot harder when they say, you know, women have to work twice as hard as men. It would have been nice to, to get a little bit more of that. But again, it was impromptu, so I think you covered some good ground in, in five minutes of last minute, or zero preparation, <laughs> actually, yes. All right, all of us are evaluating. Let's hear from Jared as well. I think the aspect that brought out the best in us was the impromptu, because I think as seasoned Toastmasters, you have presented yourselves as know what renowned people in terms of uh, communication and leadership. I think that's a most powerful thing that I would pick up now. You know, right. Showcasing the skills that you've been learning all along, as Jeff was saying, you learn it's a journey, a Toastmasters journey. You arrive and you walk all the way to the end. And I think the journey has been uh, very successful and that has been displayed today. The right Agatha. I, the impromptu was really impromptu. Uh, Don, you did very well in attempting to be a woman. I think you would make a horrible woman. <laughs> and in your presentation, it was gratifying to note that the thought of you being a woman was disturbing. But there was cynicism, which is very typical of men. If I was a woman, I would want to have everything and question everything. Is, is that really what men think of women? But I loved Angie's comeback. I, I, offer, I would like to sponsor coffee for Angie and Don to have more conversations <laughs> with really is because she truly represented the beauty and the hardness and, and everything about a woman. Love that. All right. Let's hear lastly from uh, Jaffa. I think Don exhibited enormous skills. He used emotion, he used logic, he used attack of the normal ways of thinking and a lot of rhetorical devices which are tools that enable a speaker to deliver his speech effectively. So I say it was very well done. Thank you. Right, we have callers who are hanging on the line this morning also. They want to contribute or ask questions. Paul is today. first up. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Paul. Uh, Dibal. Morning to you. Morning to you and the panelists. Yeah, morning. You have a question or a contribution uh, for our panelists? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before I do that, let me speak about myself briefly. Yes. I've always had uh, the desire to become a public speaker. Yes. But I haven't had the best of avenue to reach my, my goal. 
And this is a great opportunity that now I see this something like Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. One, I have two questions. One, how can somebody become or not become a Toastmaster member? Two, where can one connect with the Toastmasters? Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have also Manani hanging on the line. Good morning. Good morning, Manani. Hello, good, good morning. Morning, Depal. Morning to you. So I'm you... excited to see that uh, there are quite uh, good speakers and even life coaches in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, they don't seem to be very much known, and I could have actually known them because I've uh, also been having an interest to be a public speaker mm -hmm. and also a life coach, but yeah. I've not gotten the opportunity because it seems that the organizations or institutions that do the trainings don't seem to be very public and very much available. May yes. now will the the panelists also help me to see where I can go and also to know the requirements for a, a Toastmaster or a public speaker and a coach. Thank, thank you very you much. So much. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Manani. Uh, let's just take the two because also we really start for time. Maybe you want to answer those because uh, we'll get off into finalizing what we have this morning here from the evaluators also and the master evaluator and also the time and how we fared on. But I can give that opportunity to the president of Toastmaster Kenya to tell our viewers, Manani there and Paul, they're wondering how do we get to, to know about Toastmasters and how do we join Toastmasters? Thank you. I think both callers, Paul and Manani, have two questions which are interrelated, which is how do I become a Toastmaster and where? There are many clubs within the country and to help them quickly locate a club, there's the Toastmasters International website that they can go to and locate a club near me. They'll find a club within Nairobi region, Rift Valley, Kisumu, Mombasa region. There are clubs in Thika. So all they need to do is go to the toastmasters.org website, click on find a club near me, and you'll find a club that is convenient to you. You'll see the meeting times, you'll see the locations, you'll see the days of the month that that club meets. So that is where to connect, and that is how to become a Toastmaster. All right, thank you. All right, and any of you, maybe you want to add any information because there's so many clubs. Uh, you can tell us more about these clubs as well. Uh, Jared? Briefly, well, very briefly. If, if you're calling, it looks like you, both of you are calling from Nairobi. So there are many clubs in Nairobi. There's a, a club of Pat Clarence called uh, Smart Speak. There's Kwanzaa Kenya Toastmaster that meets at uh, United Kenya Club. There's Ali Barad that meets at uh, Lutheran Church. So within Nairobi, once you visit that website that uh, uh, Kwanzaa Kenya president is talking about, then you'll find a club near you. So go right there and you'll be uh, linked and you can start your journey. Right, thank you. Okay, we want to hear also how we fared, and uh, we want to hear how her speech was. This is uh, Agatha Juma, and Kari Mutu, she's going to actually give us this particular evaluation of her speech, how she performed. Kari is a trainer, independent writer, and certified public speaker. She comes from sales and marketing background in the hospitality industry. She's also a published author of a novel for young adults. Kari, you have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Postmaster. Agatha, lovely speech. It's always wonderful to hear you stand up and talk. And I know you're a seasoned speaker. May I begin by asking the timekeeper, how long was her speech, please? Agatha took five minutes, 15 seconds. Right, well within time. So each speech is given an extra 30 seconds for as a grace period before you complete. So I enjoyed the particular story because it was very personal. So you started off with your introduction, which is, uh, of course, the beginning point has to be captivating for the audience. And yours was a very narrative style. So you start off by talking about your friend Lillian, who has passed away. And right away, as a, as a listener, I want to know who's this Lillian, what happened, why did she pass away, what, what was the situation around that. So you got our attention quite early on. And then you went on to explain the story of her life which got us interested more about Lillian, which we don't know this person, but yet we want to find out more about her. And then you made a connection between the way this lady lived her life and the way life should be lived in general. So you talked about, you gave us little stories, little vignettes in your, in your speech, and you talked about 
in life we focus on, on success and productivity, especially related to, co to careers. And yet for Lillian, that was an example of a life lived successfully, but not because of the career, but because of her, her people skills. And that came up very strongly, the legacy that she left behind and how that was a learning point for you and therefore a learning point for us as the audience, what we can learn from somebody else's life. The structure of it, it was, it was well structured. You had an introduction, so we knew what you're going to talk about. You have a body where you now fill us in on the details of what you're going to discuss. And you have a conclusion, which in this case, it tied back into your introduction. So you ended off by talking about, you know, she may be gone, but she's still with us forever. So you, you came back and you tied up the whole speech very well, very beautifully. The other thing I noticed that um, I enjoyed was you have very nice turns of phrase, which is we have to use language that is not just monotonous, but is colorful, is vibrant, it brings images. You talked about a person who's a lover of people. She ate life with a big spoon, and she, a tree that is never big enough to swallow its own fruits, or her time will never end. So those sort of turns of phrase really bring in some color and, and vibrancy to your, to your speech. Uh, in terms of some of the um, technical skills, you're, you're very confident, you're calm, you stand up here, you have poise, and when you talk, your voice is pleasant, it's audible, perhaps a little bit too soft sometimes, but it was fine in this venue because we have a, we have a microphone, so they can always increase the volume, but just be aware in, in a room when there isn't any of the audio equipment to, to keep the voice audible, depending on the size of the room and the audience. And, and finally, there was um, quite an element of, there was emotion. It was a beautiful emotion, but not overly done. So you learned, you learned from the emotion, from the story, but at the same time, you didn't leave us completely in tears and then forgetting about what it was. But well done. Thank you very much. I enjoyed that. It was a Thank you. Semester. Maybe uh, if I may ask you, mm -hmm. uh, Carrie, still, because you're on the podium and for the interest of time, yes. could you also evaluate the impromptu speech uh, from Jared, please? Yes, very I can briefly. evaluate. Yes. Very briefly, well, I could talk forever, Jared. Beautiful speaker as always. It's been nice to hear you after a very, very long time. To be and not to be is such a general statement. You know, you, to stand up here and be given something that really has no beginning or end. I think you did a fantastic job on that. And that you actually narrowed it down to people choosing what they want to be in life. The choices they make, it's up to you. I thought that was amazing. It shows also that you to some extent, you know, widely read, prepared, prepared in a way that you can stand up in front of an audience and talk about different things. It was relevant. I think we can relate to people thinking about where am I going to in life? What am I going to do next? So it wasn't just a rambling, standing up here and rambling and a lot of words and verbose. There was a message, two or three messages that we could take home from that. In terms of your poise, your, your character, of course, you know, beautifully dressed, you stand up here, you look at the body language, it's, it's, um, it flows, it's beautiful, and also that you're able to maintain a, a sense of composure, I'm in charge. I was thrown into this role, but I'm going to take it, own it, and be in charge, and not let the audience feel as though, actually, this was thrown at me. So I enjoyed that aspect of it, and well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Right, in the meantime, also, as we're winding up, we'll just want to get to the reports as well and hear how we fare as well. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Hackmaster. Thank you. Jaffa. You've got uh, 30 seconds. When you speak, you only tell us what you know, but when you listen, there's a chance that you learn something new. So I'm about to test your listening skills, starting with Dawn. What was the name of Agatha's friend that died? Lillian. Angela? According to Bosiris' speech, what three things would he do if he was a woman? I can't remember, actually. I was so busy fighting his notions. <laughs> <laughs> Jared. According to Agatha's speech, what things make people stoop and groan despite succeeding? I think determination. Thank you. I think you. Uh, you have 30 seconds. The, the, ball has, I mean, the, the bell has just told. So uh, let's hear also from the air counter. Okay, air counter. <laughs> we didn't make any scores, save for me. I saw it's okay. the, bar, the bar four. 
these are post fillers that the words that don't make sense when you're quiet you just throw them in like ah a uh, carry very interestingly which is you know when you use the word is you tend to pull it you mm -hmm. and the two so those are words that you know find a bit of a challenge but you know your your ability to express mm -hmm. yourself is wonderful right thank yeah. you what about kenya 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 uh, from Angela Rarias, yeah, who as well. Isn't that a, a crutch? Repetition. Repetition. It's repetition. a skillful yes. use yes. of repetition. It's a very skillful use of repetition. Intentional. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm.